I'm Amy, sex educator, sex and relationship coach, and co-owner of PurePleasureShop.com. I'm April, VP of the cutting-edge sex toy company, Hot Octopus, and I dedicate my life to the business of sex. We are on a mission to teach you how to have hot sex, deep intimacy, and how to make your own rules for who you are as a sexual being. Welcome Welcome to to the the Shameless Sex Revolution. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 50% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code SHAMELESSSEX at purepleasureshop.com. You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Well, hello, everyone. Bonjour, everyone. Ooh, bonjour. Welcome to the Shimmer Six. I can't, I'm so bad at accents. I was well, it's because and... Fabienne is oh, on Fabienne. today's show, and I think uh, she speaks as uh, Francais. Does she? Uh, actually, I might be making it up, but oh. Fabienne, if you're listening, Fabienne. I've, I swear we had a conversation about that. When I first met her, I thought she was Brazilian. She's beautiful. Um, she's like the oh my God. most. I saw beautiful. a lot of, oh, so we were, we just know her from a certain place. I won't say where we know her from. And a lot of the men that were in that place. From were, a retreat. Yes. And they were all just like, they're just, uh, their eyes were just like blown. It wasn't blow just away. the men. It was, I was, I was like, who is that human yeah. right there? I like her. And she's got the best energy she's grounded she glows and she glows she sings oh yeah i don't know about her dancing but i'm imagining she dances she probably dances and she's very intelligent and are you single right now fabian no she's not fabian <laughs> and she also uh works in the sex and intimacy field in this episode she's talking about sexual mastery for penis owners specifically about s- uh, semen retention also known as not coming not ejaculating or uh, knowing knowing how to control your ejaculation for more orgasms for better intimacy etc she is awesome she and we actually recorded this many months ago so i'm excited we're finally releasing when did it did we record this I think it was october or something oh <laughs> it's been a while well we've been stacking up recordings because stack you're going to be out. I'm going to be out of town. You're going to be out of town. So yeah. we have to stack them up. We're stacking them up. So finally, we are releasing this. We love you, Fabienne. We hope you enjoy this. Oh, I wanted to say something really quick to some of the feedback that we've received from listeners. We are making our intros a little bit shorter for y'all. Yeah, we're trying. So let's try to keep moving. Yeah. So let's move on. <laughs> enough about enough about us. Enough about Fabienne. You're going to hear from her in a little bit. No, yeah. we love her. She's so. awesome. And before we do a sex question, uh, we'll, just two plugs. Number one, we've talked about this in the past uh, episodes, but we are hosting a Shameless Sex online speed dating event. This is uh, a pre-Valentine's Day event. This is for 2022, February 11th at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's a two Two hour event and this is for shameless sex listeners to connect with other listeners should be a fun time i'm one of the hosts you get to hang out with me connect with me and there will also be a little astrological twist on there as well with my friend julia and here's the thing we've had a number of signups a lot of them are women a lot of female identified folks so uh for all the uh male identified folks where are you at why don't you want to come and connect with other awesome uh female identified folks Aren't who you are sh- penis owner vulva owner no because we're talking more about identification than we are bits oh. you can have whatever bits you want it's just what you how you identify on this one and so if you want to come and connect with other shameless sex uh listeners that are uh identifying as women come and sign up what are you, what are you afraid of come do it so what if they identify as an alien that's cool that's re- uh, aliens are welcome and so go to purepleasureshop.com click on sex education and you can sign up there registration is limited so go and do it sooner than later another way you can connect with other shameless sex listeners is to go to our discord just for shameless sex folks and this is uh the link will be in the show notes notes of this episode you'll click on that and you can go sign up i think we already have almost 200 or sorry 300 people on there all connecting with i need each to other. get on there with everyone it's pretty at fun at least try it out i'm not the best with social media if you haven't noticed amy i know you're not that good at it and here's the thing there's an event that april and i are going to be attending there where we answer your sex questions she just doesn't know it yet surprise <laughs> i don't know the date but go and check it out all right you ready for a sex question yes please okay here we go so this is from a female identified human uh, I love to give oral sex, but in the past, I had guys who would come in my mouth and it usually tasted very salty. However, recently I was with a guy who had a vasectomy and he had no taste. Is there anything I can do about the salty taste in guys without vasectomies? Oh my God. Didn't they make those strips once? I don't know if they still do. Yeah, they're not was, out anymore. Mask. They're not. They were called oh, mask with a well, Q. Then we can't talk about them. Sorry. No, that was smart. It was, it's kind of like a Listerine strip, but it didn't have the burny tingly of Listerine. And it, it melted worked. on your tongue. And yeah. they're like mango and chocolate. But we can't talk about those because they don't make them anymore. Yeah, they're like a relic. What they're if you put a Listerine a strip in your mouth? It would probably burn the cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, don't listen to my advice, yeah. everyone. Don't do that. <laughs> um, well, so here's... 
<laughs> I mean, you could try if someone's into Bernie tingly sensation. That might be fun. Uh, <laughs> We're gonna get some feedback on that one. I was into that when Shut I shut the fuck up, April. Well, when I teach blowjob classes, I would talk about those. We had them at Pure Pleasure, and with the, and they were awesome. They would sell really well too. But I just I don't know why that company. It well, we met the person that was manufacturing them, and it was yeah. just one person, one dude. Yeah, and so he probably just either wasn't making what he thought he would, yeah. or he just moved on to something else. That happens in our industry quite frequently. Totally, they go yeah very quickly. They'll be in and out, and it was I think it's a smart idea. So if anyone knows of any products like that, please email us. Um, so, okay, April, you and I have both been, been with people with vasectomies. Do you recall, what do you call it? Recall the taste of the cum? It was actually not salty at all. And it was also, it didn't, it actually tasted, I wouldn't say good. Like it's not something I would want to eat. Like a shot every morning? No, uh, <laughs> not necessarily. It did not taste bad ever, actually. Yeah. And I felt like uh, he did have a pretty healthy diet. Yeah. And was a pretty healthy human in terms of exercise and, and diet is is a huge piece to the semen taste. I don't know about my ejaculate, what that would taste like based on my diet, but I'm assuming yeah. what you put in, you are what you eat. So if these folks are eating a lot of high fat, uh, maybe high carnivorous diets, uh, there could be chance for that. Uh, wait, yeah. that that episode of Sex in the City where oh spunky he, funk, the, the, yeah, or funky, the spunk. funky spunk, funky spunk, spunk. yeah, your and, and she wants him to have green juice, so yeah, the wheat and, and then he makes him taste it so that he's like, and he's like, I like it. Your <laughs> spunk is funky, but he has this face like it's disgusting. Okay, so he well, here's the thing, and I don't, I, I I'm going to say I'm not an expert on this in regards to the hormones, but if. A uh, vasectomy is making it so the sperm just they don't come out, but a lot of the other fluids from other parts of the body, like the Cowper's gland and the prostate, are still coming out. But the sperm is in an area that's heavily influenced by hormones, and our hormones are constantly changing every day. Then it would make sense that the taste of the ejaculate with sperm in it would change, whereas ejaculate without sperm. And and you know this is a good question for a doctor because mm-hmm. this is not my area of expertise. I'm just saying as someone who's had a lot of cum in my mouth from people, and I've only had. What about you with the vasectomy, folks? Same thing as you. It's, it's so totally no, fine. Okay, it's great. Well, um, I've never had anyone else's. Oh, that's true. Cum in my mouth, so I have no idea what other ejaculate ah. tastes like. So then, so the question is, what can you do with people, like you were saying, with people who, who don't have a vasectomy? It, the only thing I would say is diet, really, because hormones, we can't really change. So then there's also genetics, just like we have a unique smell, like BO, and it's unique. And our skin is very uniquely smelling. Um, and hormones are just, they're going to do their thing unless we uh, uh, have some sort of hormone imbalance, and that could be diet, but also is you know other things that we can do working with the doctor. So like what you're saying is just eat, have the person just eat Just get really a vasectomy. Healthy. That's what we're yeah. saying. No, just get a vasectomy out there, a, and yeah, you won't have off. a salty tasting fun. We don't Problem know that. Yeah, <laughs> well, and the other thing I would say is you know maybe if you don't like the taste of the cum, but you know it's changing every day, and you don't really know what it's going to be like every day, um, you know, you could like have it in your mouth and if it's terrible you know let your partner know don't please don't take this personally but if i like your hormones are changing every day and if there's a day where i spit it out very quickly please don't take it personally it doesn't isn't anything against you there's a, um, there's i don't know if they're myths maybe you know about the pineapple? pineapple yes pineapple juice is that even true i haven't seen like a legit study on it and there's a lot of other companies who made products like little supplement pills with a whole bunch of pineapple stuff and i just think it's more of a gimmick i'm sure maybe Things can help in in the, in those ways, just like cranberry juice can help with things, especially bladder stuff. But there's, I don't know. I don't know. There's research about how uh, diet affects the erectile tissue and oh, yeah. for people of all yeah. ages. So I, that I, it all has to be related on some level. I don't know about pineapple juice. But everything's so tested out. related. You can test it out as a dude. And I just think my body just seems to me like it feels better and probably smells and tastes better when I'm a healthier person, when I'm getting good sleep, I'm getting exercise, I'm sweating a fair amount, and I'm eating really healthy. But when I don't do those things, I'm sure it affects everything. Everything is connected. So why don't we assume that it will affect the fluids that are coming out of us, especially from our genitals? Um, so yeah, I don't know. And then the ways that you can have that nice conversation with them is, is again, to say something like April said a shit sandwich <laughs> many times in her show, say something really positive. I, I really love sucking your cock. I even like your cum in my mouth. And sometimes it has a little bit of a salty taste. So if at any point it's in my mouth and I'm not into it and I spit it out right away, please don't take that personally. It's just that some days it's different and you can do the same with my body fluids. You could do the old cum in the mouth and then you just do the old sweep it out with your, with your hand real quick. Or you're like, <laughs> Yeah. 
And then like you make that, that noise. <laughs> well, I don't make or that noise. Or you have but. some some nice tasting juice on the side that you quickly wash it down with. But you, I would let them know before so they're not like, oh, you know, they hate the taste of my cum all the time. And you're like, no, I actually, a lot of times I do. It just changes every day. And that's okay. Just like if you licked my armpit, it would be different every day. Well, your gag reflex would be going off if you're, ex- if you're expecting it to taste salty. And then it goes, like, I know I would. I'd be like, oh, no, here it comes. Oh, and sometimes oh. there's more bitter days yeah. and neutral days and sweet days. So anyways, yeah, we hope that helps. And good luck and go drink up all the cum. <laughs> Are and you ready? spit it out if you're not into it. <laughs> are you ready for Fabian's bio? We just had so many men that are like, oh, I love dreams. Like, okay, anyways, yes, I'm ready for <laughs> Fabian's bio. Fabian is a California-based sex, dating, and intimacy coach who specializes in helping penis owners develop sexual mastery, offering them the perspective and insight of a well-studied woman with a pussy. She guides people to use their sexual energy with integrity and intention to get more in touch and in love with their authentic selves and sexual expression. Find out more about Fabienne's work at FabienneAnique.com. I'm going to spell that for you. F-A-B-I-E-N-N-E-A-N-N-I-C-K.com. And it's interview time. All right, everyone, it is interview time, and we are here with a very sweet, wonderful, dear friend of ours that we met in Costa Rica in a retreat there, and uh, we were all together for seven days, and I actually didn't find out until I think like the end of the retreat that uh, she also worked in the field of sexuality, and I'm really intrigued by um, one of the many specialties that she has is Fabienne uh, has uh, working with penis-owning individuals, and we we're, we're talking about sexual mastery for penis owners. Uh, we'll talk about semen retention, probably multiple orgasms. Uh, but we'll also talk about you know how, what, it, what it's like to be a woman working with penis owners and why that might be beneficial. So first of all, welcome to our show, Fabian. We love you so much and we're so happy to see you. Thank you. It's so good to see you too. So, so good to see you. Yeah. Wish someday we'll do it in person. We'll give those, those big old hugs again. But for now, we will be over the interwebs. So let's start with the same prompt that we always start with. Can you please tell us how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality? Yes, absolutely. So I feel like I I started my, I made my entrance into the field of sexuality, unfortunately, from a very young age with some sexual trauma. And then my family was extremely supportive of me. My parents were very, very helpful in helping me to work through the trauma and actually managed to get to a very healthy place within my sexuality pretty quickly. And so that sort of gave me this from an early age, gave me this understanding that uh, sexuality is something that can be really heavy and that can have a lot of uh, issues along with it, but that is also um, very able to be healed when given the right the right situation. And so um, I started getting into this work, working with women, doing internal massage and trauma work. And then things just sort of started shifting and growing. And when I was, when I was, I don't know, early twenties, I remember talking to my therapist and saying, I feel like what, I feel like one of my gifts or one of my purposes or one of my missions in the world is, is to be helping men open up sexually to, to witness them, to love them, to help them to show their vulnerable selves and, and to meet them in that space. And then I was like, and I don't want to have sex with hundreds of men. So what do I do? Um, and so that was sort of, my therapist was like, I don't know what to tell you, but that was definitely sort of an intro point (laughs) of like, there's something here and it comes very naturally. And I love to talk about sex and I love to talk to people about what's painful and then move, shift that into something that's in witnessing it, that is beautiful and that is accepted and that is, um, comfortable within ourselves. So that was, that was, those were sort of the two directions that I came in from. Um, and I see a lot, I I then did a, an extensive training of, of sexuality coaching. And I see that there is a lot of this work around sexual healing and sexual mastery. And see that there's a lot of this for people with vaginas, people with pussies, but not as much for people with cocks, for men, and the way that I see it is if, if, if we're going to heal, we all need to heal. We all need to explore. We all need to rise together. We can't, it needs to be everybody. And, and I work specifically with men and people with penises 
not only because it comes so naturally, I have like so many brothers and, <laughs> and dear male friends and it comes very naturally, but also because it's a, it's a tricky moment in history, right? Where there's like, there's so much awareness, a tricky moment in history for, for everyone, but specifically in the realm of sexuality for men, there's so much awareness of trying to be safe, of trying to not be creepy, of trying to, you know, be and not be many things, especially with the Me Too movement. And so there are all these like, don't do this, but do this, but don't do this. And there aren't a lot of good examples of, of how we can be and how men can be and how people with penises can be sexually, right? It's like either you're too, you're creepy or too intense or predatory, or you're not sexy enough, you're not masculine enough, you're not embodied. So I find that it's really important at this moment to, to be, to, to be offering and developing and uh, building ways to, to have healthy outlets to express sexual energy for everybody. Mm, that gets a fuck yeah, fuck Fabian. Yeah. That gets a huge fuck yeah. And when I first met you, I just was thinking about how I I really knew on some level that you were a healer and a teacher I, before we even had really spoken because your energy is just so incredible. And we did a sweat lodge together. Remember the sweat lodge? <laughs> I do remember. Or that, uh, <laughs> and I was like, she is a badass. So anyway, not about not about us and, and how much I love you, but um, I do. And I'm so excited to talk to you about your work because we've talked about it off air and uh, I can't wait for you to share this. So my next question is teaching. Can you teach us a bit more about semen retention and how it releases? Uh, I'm sorry, not releases, but reta retains <laughs> well, and, <laughs> and, how it, and how it relates to sexual mastery. Yeah, that was a Freudian slip. Um, and exactly like, why would someone want to learn how to do this? Yeah, absolutely. So there are a lot of different reasons to practice semen retention and a lot of a lot of people a lot of different reasons why people come to the practice of semen retention and um a lot of people come for or don't come, come to semen retention don't well yeah <laughs> a lot of people decide <laughs> yeah. to practice semen retention um for the actual energetic benefit, like having more energy, having more vitality, having more motivation, having more confidence uh, in the bedroom, but also in life. And essentially, when you ejaculate, you are losing some amount of energy. And you are, you know, that's why you get kind of tired afterwards. You have a dopamine spike and then prolactin rises when the dopamine drops after ejaculation. So you're going to experience less energy. And when you ejaculate a lot, then you're depleting yourself of, of this energy. So a lot of people will practice semen retention in order to build more energy, not just in their sex lives, but also in their career, in their relationships. Uh, a lot of guys talk about, uh, like it's easier to look people in the eye. More people are drawn to them, just sort of like this built, uh, radiance and this, this increased level of you know, when you have a lot of energy, people are drawn to you and you, you are drawn to things that are exciting. And, um, <clears throat> and then on another level, practicing semen retention can really help to gain awareness and control over the sexual energy in your body. So, uh, when you, when you practice semen retention, you learn to hold more sexual energy in your body. And then once you have, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Once you've accustomed your body to holding that level of arousal, you not only then are supercharged with that energy, but you also can then last longer and you can sort of spend more time being creative within, within the, the realm of high arousal. And it's also a lot about keeping the energy, keeping the, uh, your sexual energy and just your, your life force, your vitality within you. So instead of sort of like literally or figuratively spraying it all over the place, like you're, you're keeping it, you're pulling it back into your center. And so when I talk about semen retention, it is semen retention, but it's also an energetic thing. It's also like when you're in a room, are you sort of like spraying your sexual energy everywhere? Or are you like, if you get turned on by somebody, are you kind of like or going after them? Or are you breathing it into your core 
and really connecting to, oh, this is my sexual energy, owning the sexual energy and letting yourself actually be charged up by your own turn on and like then having more energy and having more of that, uh, even charisma. And then when you speak to somebody, you're not spraying on them or, or spilling on them or trying to take from them, but rather meeting them from this place of, I have this energy in my body. I know what to do with it. And Mm. let's interact from that place. So it's like, it's like fuel that the body already has and you have the ability to put it outward and, and just kind of give it up and give it away. Or you have the ability to learn how to kind of hold it in and then use it to fuel the whole being in all these ways, including sexuality, including in your career, in your everyday life. Exactly. Exactly. And, and I also think a lot of, when I hear of a lot of different, uh, schools of thought around semen retention there some people really say like you never want to ejaculate you never you know you want to hold your seat it's the most precious and I really don't see it like that I more see it as it's really nice to have a say in when you I mean it's like packed full of zinc like the the number of like pure minerals that are in semen is incredible and so you want to you know when you when you keep that inside your body it transmutes back into your body it transmutes into other you know you you absorb the reabsorb the nutrients and you're not losing all of that so so yeah. is it okay to ejaculate every once in a while or is this something yeah. or or just forever hold it in and you're just gonna be like never <laughs> well she's, she's saying she doesn't agree with never doing yeah, it so yeah, yeah. like it's like once a week yes is, it, what, is there is there a time frame that, <laughs> there, that here for people to afford? yeah so within the Taoist tradition there there's like a map of like when you're this old you want to wait this many days so I think it's like when you're th- 35, they say like every 10 days. And then if you're younger, you can, you can ejaculate more frequently. If you're older then less frequently. And the Taoist practices are, are based in thousands of years of, of wisdom and knowledge. And so, um, I tend to, to say they probably know what they're talking about. (laughs) And, um, and what I say is really, it's, it's about, it's your choice. It's really your choice, but knowing that you can hold that and knowing that, okay, I have a big, I have a big work meeting or I have a big sports game or I have something that I want to build my energy for. I have the ability to build my energy for that. I have my, or, or, you know, I want to show up for sex in a specific way. I have the ability and I have the choice. And for me, it's really about building choice. So when we're talking about semen retention, we're talking about you're still feeling pleasure. You're still learning to have orgasm, but the, or you're having orgasm, but it's separate from ejaculating. That's what we're speaking to. Absolutely, yeah. So you can still have, uh, you can still have orgasms that are non-ejaculatory, and that takes some time of training. A lot of guys have actually experienced that, and people with penises have actually experienced that without knowing what it was, um, but. I've, I'll talk to a lot of clients who are like, oh, I had this experience where I was self-pleasuring and then like my whole body started shaking and I just sort of felt like these waves of pleasure, like what the hell was that? And I'm like, oh, that, yeah, was probably a non-ejaculatory orgasm. Um, so there are ways and there are many practices and uh, many ways of training the body to separate orgasm and ejaculation. So, because my understanding also for penis owners is, you know, they're so they're, you know, they're born and they don't have the ability to ejaculate. They don't have all the the things that are ready to to do the ejaculation process, but they can also still have orgasms. I think that there's studies that are showing that perhaps maybe babies are, uh, or sorry, fetuses are are having some sort of orgasmic process in the womb. I I don't know if those are perfect studies, but at least young people, you see a four year old there. I mean, I know plenty. April used to hump her teddy bear at five, you know, so uh, penis owners as well would do the same thing, but they didn't have the ability to ejaculate. So they were already having this experience and then their body and their hormones started to change and then ejaculation went hand in hand with it. And then now all of a sudden people just think that they have to go together. So when you work with people on this, and we'll talk about some tips and tools in a little bit later, how long are we talking? Is this just like a, a one week thing? Is this like a year long journey? Like what do you usually see in people? Yeah, I see such a wide range. I see some some people it's like two weeks and they're practicing consistently. Then I see some people where it takes a lot longer. And I feel like it depends on a whole range of things. One being mindset, how much you're like, I got this, I can do it. I'm going to do my practices. I'm going to, I'm going to get this soon. And really believing that it's, that it's, that your body can do it now. Sometimes that mindset shift takes a little bit longer. And then I also see if, 
if people are, if people do yoga, if people do meditation, if people do qigong, it's going to be easier because when you have, when you have tension in your pelvis and specifically tension, like energetic tension where it, energy is not moving freely through your body. When there's a buildup of energy, it's going to look for somewhere to go. And so it's going to either get stuck in the pelvis and you're going to get kind of agitated and, and so turned on that you don't really know what to do about, do with all that energy, or it's going to be really hard to, uh, circulate the energy through your body because it's so tense that it just wants somewhere to go and it just kind of explodes outwards. So when people have practices like yoga, qigong, where they're already practicing, opening up the meridian system, using their breath deeply, it tends to be a little bit easier uh, from the beginning. Whereas if you need to develop those practices of deep breathing and, and movement of energy, then, then it's going to take a little bit longer just to get used to those practices. And what, so, okay, so uh, you're doing such a great job at explaining this, and I'm, I'm actually retaining a lot of information oh, not releasing <laughs> not releasing i'm retaining <laughs> it. for you as uh, well. and so, <laughs> <laughs> so my question for you is uh why would penis owners want to work with a, a vulva owning individual like yourself on this topic yeah <clears throat> well this is a it's a it's a good question because I get this question a lot from, from a lot of guys where they're like, well, you know, I, I'd like to work with you and I like what you're doing, but, but how do you know these things? Because you don't have a penis. And there are a few different things here. And one is that I, I teach semen retention, but more than anything, I teach sexual mastery. So it, and semen retention is a piece of that, but it's not an, an absolutely necessary piece to it. And for me, sexual mastery has to do with so much more than, than just retaining semen. It's so much about knowing your body, knowing your sexuality, knowing your sexual flavors, your desires, uh, loving yourself, being all right with the pieces of yourself that in the past you might have felt ashamed of. Um, so one piece to this is that I can do a lot of the practices that I'm teaching people. It's going to be different, but I can do energetic practices. I can do breath practices. I can do polarity practices. And I have, quote unquote, I don't love using masculine and feminine, but for uh, the sake of this, I'm going to use them, which I have masculine energy and feminine energy within me, which all of us do. And in my life and in my sexuality, I associate much more with, quote unquote, feminine qualities but existence is all a game, right? Like why not play with it and explore it as much as we can? So, so on a not necessarily physical level, I can do the practices at t to understand them. Uh, but I don't have the, I don't have testicles. I don't have a cock. And so there is sort of this, I don't know exactly what it's like, but I am a cisgendered woman who has had primarily cisgendered male partners. And so I, you know, and I have a handful of brothers and I have uh, many of my closest friends are men. And I, I also talk to so many strangers, like on the, on the plane, in the doctor's office, like all the time, I'm constantly like, I have a question for you and asking, <laughs> asking guys about sexuality. And a lot of these, a lot of these men have an easier time talking to me about sexuality than they would with another man. And so I get this huge range of information and can see patterns and themes across the board. And I can also see it from a slightly outside perspective, right? Not from my own experience as somebody with a cock, but seeing it from hearing people's sensitivities, vulnerabilities, and so I get a, I get a, an experience of it sort of from the outside and then, and then, yeah, from having male lovers and, and asking them, well, what's going on here? Or what is this sensation? Or sometimes I'll call my best friend and it'll be like, so when you're really close to ejaculation and you do this particular <laughs> breath, where exactly do you feel? And, and I'm, I'm constantly getting curious about it and asking many different guys, um, perspectives on it. So mm. simultaneously, you know, I've done my data research in the bedroom, supporting clients, talking to people mm -hmm. wherever I am. Um, and I can give the perspective of the side of the receiver slash the one interacting with a cock. 
Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast is free to you because of our amazing sponsors, such as UberLube. UberLube is a luxurious silicone lubricant that can enhance your sex and intimacy. UberLube's unique formula is velvety, long-lasting, with no flavor or scent, and it feels absolutely incredible on the body. There are thousands of doctors recommending UberLube to their patients because it's less likely to throw off your pH than most other lubes. So whether you want to make your hot sex even hotter or you want to prevent dryness, take our advice and check out our favorite go-to UberLube. UberLube isn't just for sex. I use it for massage, to tame my frizzy hair, to prevent chafing, even for oral sex sessions. I love how it comes in a beautiful bottle with a pump top for easy access, appearing more like a cosmetic product, so you can leave it on your nightstand shamelessly. UberLube is without a doubt my favorite lube, and countless listeners agree, often stating we never knew lube could be this good. To learn why we think it's the best lube on the planet, check out uberlube.com and use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. Again, that's uberlube.com, use code SHAMELESSSEX for 10% off and free shipping. This podcast was also made possible by omgs.com. OMGS combines scientific research of real vulva owners so you can learn shame-free techniques on how to pleasure the pussy. OMGS studied 20,000 plus people of all ages and turned the research into animated modules, short videos, and beautiful infographics that are tasteful and easy to understand. Whether you want to learn about external pleasure, internal stimulation, or techniques with toys, OMGS can help you master vulva pleasure. Let me tell you, I've been recommending OMGS to my clients for years and it's been changing their lives because knowledge really can activate your pleasure power. OMGS is for anyone who cares about vulva pleasure and wants to take it to the next level. OMGS can help you become a sexual strategist by equipping you with the tools you need to unlock your pleasure potential. Plus, your OMGS purchase helps fund more pleasure research. OMG, that's wonderful. Only pay once and these techniques are yours forever. That's right. This is not a subscription service and you don't need to download a thing. So go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off when you purchase any OMGS season. Again, go to omgs.com slash shameless to get 10% off right now. Time to pursue your pleasure. And now back to the show. That's, I think there's something to be said about you showing up with a little bit of a not, I mean, we can't say it's perfectly non-biased, but you're not coming in with, well, my cock does this, so here's what your cock should do or any of that stuff. And then also, I think there's something really powerful. If we're speaking to penis owners who are vulva owning, oh, sorry, vulva owner fans, so you're, you're admirers of vulva owners of people who might identify as women or have pussies, um, working with, a, and by the way, if you're just listening, Fabian is fucking gorgeous. So, you know, you should go check out her photo <laughs> yeah. on our website or Instagram. Um, I, and, and gorgeous or not though I think there's probably something really powerful in bringing in that vulnerability to a woman again if you are a penis owner who is it was into women um that can be deeply healing you know that you could share here's something I don't feel like I have control over here's something I've been shamed about or that society has shamed me about and you're there normalizing it for them and I understand the whole part too about how that might be more difficult to bring to men because a lot of men are kind of competing against each other and there's this thing like am I really am I a strong man if I you know if my cock doesn't do this and got a lot of I'm gonna say guys a lot of penis owning individuals aren't hanging out with other penis owners and talking about their sex life and their sex problems and how their cock didn't perform the way They're they didn't want football. it to. You're watching yeah. football. We're talking about the chicks <laughs> were playing that one time, yeah. but like not really about the the struggles. And that's a generalization because I know uh, plenty of penis owners who do. But so is that your experiences? There's a little bit probably a healing quality in working with um, a woman in that as well. Definitely, yeah. I think a lot of penis owners have an easier time talking to somebody. Again, this is a, a, definitely a generalization, but a lot of penis owners and a lot of guys have. Uh, have an easier time. I think in, in our society, there's a little bit more normalization of talking to talking to your mom about your insecurities or your issues or talking to women about that seems to be a little bit more normalized. And so I see as a pattern that that yeah, a lot of a lot of people have an easier time talking to me than they would even to their closest guy friends about these things. Hmm. And that's also part of why yeah. I have this this men's course that I do with a group of men is it's primarily men. It's, it's directed towards penis owners, but so far all of the people who I've had have been men with penises. And uh, 
it's a group of it's a group of guys and I'm there initiating it and witnessing and asking questions and encouraging the conversation but a lot of them for the first time are sharing these things in front of in front of other guys wow which is powerful yeah which is a good question to ask because for folks out there listening uh, there's, I'm sure, common patterns that you're seeing amongst these folks that you're working with. Uh, can you talk about some of the most common issues? I don't like saying issues, but issues or patterns or challenges that that you see with the with the men you work with? Yeah, totally. I would say a lot of people come for again. Okay, I don't like the word issues either, and I don't like a lot of the words for the issues, quote unquote, issues that, that people come for. So problems, for example, so dysfunction. <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. so for example, premature ejaculation is a term and I, that, and I see a lot of people coming who, who ejaculate before they would like to is more how I like to put it rather than premature. Like, yeah. Uh, so I see a lot of, a lot of people coming saying, I ejaculate within three to five minutes and my partner's really unsatisfied or, um, you know, I ejaculate really quickly. And so I feel like I can't have these really profound sexual experiences that I want to have. So that is one that I see a lot. Uh, and then another word that I hate, erectile dysfunction, um, not being Uh. as hard or last (laughs) having your erection last as long as you'd like to, or having it be as hard as you would like it to be. Um, and I see both of these a lot and, and they show up in many different ways, but these tend to be the things that people come for. And then there's also, there are also a lot of people who just say, I just know that there's more. I know that there's more to sex. I know that I could develop more. And also as, as a person with a vagina, I, can share a lot of, okay, here's how to work with your own sexual energy. But then also if you are interacting with somebody who has a pussy, like here's a way that you can do that. And so yeah, there's, there people will come saying like, I have this quote unquote issue or just like, I want to know more. I want to experience deeper intimacy, deeper pleasure. I want to understand how to, how to work with a pussy a little bit more. You know, I also, I do also just teach like sort of 101, like how to approach a pussy, how to both physically and also energetically, like how to warm it up, how to, it took me years to understand so much of this and a lot of studying of just how to understand a pussy. And so I'm like, I got to spread the word, you know? (laughs) So, um, and, and one of the cool things also about, about working as myself, working with guys and a lot of the guys who I work with are straight men is I can simultaneously, and whether or not they're straight men, I can simultaneously, I can, I can explain something and show something and model something, but then I can also play with dynamics there. And I can also, you know, be like, okay, I'm going to enter into this other space. How can you meet me now in, in that space? Um, Hmm. yeah. 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 I think that's, that's such an important work and I love the way that you phrase all of that. And so I'm, I'm curious now about the tips and tools. Our listeners love some tips and tools because they're like, yeah, 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 of course. And by the way, we'll give you links on how to sign up for Fabian's courses and things too, but we'll give you some freebies here now. Which is what are some little bits of tips and tricks that you can offer for folks who are experiencing these issues of, I'm going to use the term uh, ejaculatory control uh, issues and erectile control issues where it's just not uh, to the place where they want it to be like do you have any tips for those folks absolutely yeah the the first thing to say here I think and this is this is less of like a very specific tool and more of an entire mind shift and and uh way of looking at and interacting with your cock and your sexual energy is that what I see in um people who are who are ejaculating faster than they would like to, or who are having trouble staying as hard as they would like to, is that so many people are simultaneously too focused on their cock and not paying enough attention to their cock. So, so they aren't arousing the rest of their body. So it's localized pleasure, which then makes them ejaculate faster. And then they're so, at the same time, they're so, you know, worried about what's happening with their cock that they aren't putting their focus uh, into 
moving the energy through their body into the rest of their system. And, and then at the same time, they're also trying to distract themselves from their cock. So it's like too much, you know, too much focus on what the cock is doing and not enough focus on the rest of the body. And then trying to distract themselves, trying to focus on, I've I've heard a number of people say that they like, they'll think about like their grandma or like, like math. And baseball. baseball. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like whatever's going to really like get their mind away from it. But when you do that, then you have no awareness of what's actually happening in your cock. And so then you're actually, uh, you don't know where you're at in your level of arousal. And then you're actually losing some level of control and presence. So resensitizing can seem backwards, but it's actually the way you want to go of like more awareness, more presence, more like within your, within your masturbation practice or with a partner getting to know where am I at? Am I at 70%? Am I at 80% of arousal? Am I getting close to the point of no return? Right? Like and getting what is seven, what does 75 feel like compared to 80? And really sensitizing and getting to know the body. So that's that's like a an overarching thing that I think is so helpful is just getting to know the sensations and, and the body even more deeply. Um and then I'm sure yeah. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to add to that too. And people probably focus on their partners too. Uh, not too much, but they're not dropping into their bodies. I've been with people that have been so focused on me that their uh, their cock wasn't doing what they wanted it to do at the time. And I was like, uh, just breathe into it. Mm. Breathe into that cock. So I just wanted to add that. Maybe that was where you're going next. But I was like, that totally happened before where I can see people not dropping into themselves. Absolutely. And there's also something, I don't know if this is your experience, and I'm sure this is not everyone's, but in my experience, like it's it's sexy when someone is there for their pleasure. Like when someone is like there and get obviously not like ignoring me and not there also for my pleasure, but when they're like, I'm here to to experience pleasure and you're here to experience pleasure. So let's do this together. And when there's this, yeah, when there's really like a full presence in their body and with their pleasure, not only on the approval of, of me through whatever my sounds or whatever are. Totally. There's, yeah, it's like, it's balance, right? There's like not, there's this balance of being in your body and connected to your body, but a balance of playing, you being connected to the other body that you're playing with. And I like how you said it, a lot of people are either too focused on their, well, I don't like this happening, but too focused on their cock or not focused enough. And there's like some in between there. And so what I'm hearing there when you're saying getting, having more awareness, is it, are you speaking to like, really slowing things down is it like approaching sex as a meditation almost and so that you can see these different levels and intervals I think it can be but it doesn't even necessarily need to be I think it's it's more so just uh getting more and more present to sensation more and more uh and really practicing dropping into sensation what am I actually feeling what happens uh what happens when I become more even more sort of like dropping my consciousness down into my, into my cock. And I don't even mean it in like a, Mm. you know, allow your consciousness to drop down. It's just like, no, I'm aware of what the sensation (laughs) is. (laughs) And, and, I like that voice. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And in with, when I work with, with clients and then also within the, the, 12 week course that I teach, we work with sort of the, the tools. I, I structure them into an acronym because acronyms are the best way in my, in my, within my mind to, to understand things and remembering things, especially if you're having sex and you're like, what was that thing I was supposed to remember? And, and the acronym is breathes because the most important thing is breath and breathing into the lower belly. And, um, it's, you know, deep breaths, noticing our, if you're holding your breath. And this is, I would say, like number one tool to use in gaining more awareness and then in also just in, in gaining more control over your sexual energy and how close you are to, to ejaculation is, am I breathing into my lower belly? Am I, am I relaxing the breath? Am I, have I been holding my breath? How can I make it more expansive and more deeper? Um, and then relaxation, physical and mental relaxation letting the the pelvis, you know, when, when you're thrusting, you don't need to like pump you and squeeze your glutes in this like really harsh way. Like you can soften your hips and your glutes and your thighs and everything. You can just move it from your lower back and relaxing the muscles that you don't need to be working is going to let that arousal move more easily through your body. And you'll be able to last longer, have 
potentially have full-bodied orgasms or non-ejaculatory orgasms. Um, and then E, I'll run through them quickly. E is edging yeah. and expansion and edging practice is huge for this. So bringing yourself to the way that I encourage people to do it. It's like, bring yourself to like a level six of arousal, get to know what that feels like, bring yourself back down to a level four, then up to a level seven and back down to a five and then up to a level eight. And you're sort of bringing yourself up and then back down and then edging for a while where you're bringing yourself almost to orgasm and then releasing down a bit. And this gives you incredible control, incredible awareness, and can oftentimes be the thing that, that, uh, leads to non-ejaculatory orgasms. Uh, and then A is awareness. So again, focusing on internal sensations, lack of awareness leads to lack of connection, leads to lack of control. Um, And then T is train. So it's really, you can't just understand it and then your body does it, right? It's like you train, you you look at how you masturbate and you do a a self-pleasure practice three times a week for 20 minutes and you train your body and you re- uh, recarve the neural pathways that have gotten used to ejaculating and masturbating in a specific way and having sex in a specific way. Uh, and then H is holds and pulses. So doing PC exercises to strengthen and bring more awareness to those muscles so that you can develop more control and more, and more sensitivity. And, and then also practices for relaxing those muscles so they don't get overly tight. And then E is express sounding, moving. So many people who I talk to say that sounding is the thing that has helped them after sort of breath and relaxation, uh, that sounding is like the thing that has helped them sort of liberate the sexual energy in their body and be able to last longer. And a lot of people are like, this seems like the simplest thing ever, but it's the most profound. So, Okay, time for a quick break. This podcast is free to you because of our awesome sponsors like Everlywell. If you're on a path like me where you're committed to taking great care of yourself in 2022, then you're seeing that it's time to get a better understanding of what's going on inside that precious body of yours. Everlywell at-home lab tests give you physician-reviewed results and personalized insights so you can take action on your health and wellness now. Everlywell has over 30 tests to choose from, including food sensitivity, sleep and stress, thyroid, and their STD test discreetly allows you to test for seven types of STDs, all from the privacy of your own home. I personally love the ease Everlywell offers when it comes to discovering and understanding how to take care of my body. I took the metabolism test and now I know so much more about my hormone levels and how to tend to this body for ultimate energy. They make it easy by shipping your test straight to your door with everything needed for a simple sample collection. All you do is return the test with a prepaid shipping label and your results are sent to your device in just days. And for our listeners, Everlywell is offering a special discount of 20% off an at-home lab test at everlywell.com slash shameless. That's everlywell.com slash shameless for 20% off your at-home lab test everlywell.com slash shameless all right let's get back to the show but they weren't they weren't doing it though it's i mean a lot of people had to when they started masturbating they're all quiet exactly. they didn't want to hear them and or then it fast, stays fast yeah they're fast hard. but they're like in the shower you know and yeah. they're 14 and you don't want anyone to know and now they're in their 50s and they're still like Ugh. exactly i love <laughs> i love having sex with someone who has a loud orgasm i think it's so hot i'm like please scream make the walls vibrate i don't share walls with anyone please do it and if i did i would still say please do it what, that's what i love when i watch porn because when i watch any porn which which I've taken long breaks from porn, and this isn't about porn. You're but porn fast. Right I now? love when <laughs> there's audible, a lot of yeah. audible things coming out of the penis person, uh, the the dude in the, in the shoot. I'm like, make some noise, but and not I'm just like, like uh, no, not like, oh uh, uh, yeah. I'm like, uh, I love like that turns me on more than ju- even even seeing what's on the screen. And same thing when I'm in practice with a partner, if they're really like making like hot sounds, I I and I hope this is what you're talking about because this is when I think about sounding. Um, is it's like such a turn on for me as a, as a vulva, like just like getting penetrated and just knowing that they're enjoying themselves. I'm like, yes, like, <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. It's so awesome. And there's there is a lot of I think a lot of I don't know about stigma around it, but I think a lot of a lot of guys and penis owners are are have repressed it a lot and and haven't learned there's also like in movies you see like the the pussy owner like moaning and making all these sounds and there's not a lot of examples of of penis owners doing that and so 
it's and and it's like you just said you know you're like quietly in your bedroom like masturbating as fast coming as quick as you can as silently as you can and then someone's like you know well now we want you to last for hours and you're like but I've been training for 35 years to last for as fast as possible (laughs) and I've been silent and I've been like kind of ashamed and so yeah it's like liberating these things that these these neural pathways that we've created for so many years and then and then seeing that it's actually so hot that it's actually so sexy to Mm. to be loud and to be expressive and yeah so take the breathes. Breathe. Oh, breathes. An S. The breathes. Take the breathes. Oh, I forgot. S. Oh, oh, there oh, is S. an S. Yeah. There's an S. Yes. <laughs> I almost forgot it. Um, S is sublimation and circulation. So um, moving the energy through the body us- using Taoist and tantric techniques for moving the energy through the body, distributing it, uh, energizing the, the rest of the body with that energy. And that can either be just sort of up and out or around in, in cycles. So breath, hmm. relaxation, edging, awareness, training holds expression sublimation slash circulation which Equals. is a awesome <laughs> I, have to do, I just have to grow a penis and then <laughs> yes yeah. but i think this could apply to vulva owners which brings me to a question about partnership and someone that's going into this journey, right? They want to become a sexual master at semen retention or uh, orgasming how they like. Uh, so how can people, whether, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a Volvo owner. I'd like to know for me cause I'm selfish. Um, but <laughs> how can, how can we support these penis owners um, in their journey? Like if you're their partner and you're like, I want you to go on this journey, but I need to support you. But there's, I mean, cause it's a journey, right? It's you're you're kind of on that journey with them. It's not a switch. You can't yeah. switch it. Beep, beep. Absolutely. Yeah. And this is honestly a lot of, this can be challenging for a lot of people who have lovers who are like, now I'm going to practice semen retention, or now I'm going to be doing these sexual practices that really ask me to retrain the way that I look at sex and the way that I am during sex. It can be challenging, especially if you're like, but I want you to come all over my face. Like, I love that so much, you know, that can be, that's April. <laughs> that can be just kidding. It so is not just really not into it. So. <laughs> yeah. right. Um, so I think one thing is it's, it's wonderful for it to be a, a conversation together if it's a, if it's a partner and to say, I'm, I'm wanting to do these new practices, but they might, I, I might be extra sensitive for a little while. You know, I might, it, I'm, I'm trying not to ejaculate. And so I might have to pause every once in a while and take some deep breaths. Uh, I had a lover once who, in order to sublimate the energy, he would stand on his head. And so every once in a while we'd be making love and he'd be like, one second and would stand on his head for 30 seconds. And I'd just be like, all right, patience That's awesome. <laughs> on the floor or, or on the bed. Like, because the bed, it's gotta be hard to stand on your head. It's true. You, you on the floor. the floor. I would stand on the floor. Okay. okay. Yeah. I'm just getting a visual. You're, this was okay. a yogi, right? Yeah. This was like Definitely a yogi. A yogi. Person. Okay. Definitely yeah. A yogi. yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Awesome. It's like time for breath work. And we do. Yeah. And, and so I think the main thing is, <laughs> is patience. Patience and being like, this is going to end up with amazing hours. Potentially, this could lead to hours of of lovemaking. This could lead to really profound spiritual experiences together in lovemaking. This is this person's choice to uh, to move forward in something that they want to move forward in, to move in a different direction, to explore, to... Um, So I think patience is a huge one. And then, and, and just support, like verbal support of like, you got this, do you need, you know, do you need, is there anything that I can do to make this easier for you? Are there any positions that might make it really hard for you to not ejaculate? You know, maybe, maybe we take a month off of doggy style. If that is really, if that pushes you over the edge really quickly, and we both know that, know that. And then staying verbally connected of like, how are you doing in the moment? Where are you at? Are you at, can you tell me when you're at 80% so that we can slow down? Uh, and, and asking verbally and then also getting into noticing, uh, paying attention to the subtleties when they're becoming aroused, like staying really present with them as you want them to be with you. Right. And staying, staying really present and noticing when their breathing intensifies or their muscle movements start to sort of shift, uh, or when their sounds signify that they're, that they're getting close to ejaculation and then bringing, supporting them by, by staying aware and then bringing, being able to 
speed up, being able to slow down, being able to pause, being able to shift by staying in, by being attuned with them. Totally makes sense. I mean, you're, so they're just saying like you're in a you're in a supportive role, but you're also the attunement piece is really important because you're you're bringing in your own awareness. So while your penis owning partner is working on their own awareness within their body, you're bringing in that too. I I would imagine that what is helpful is, would you, I don't know what do you see when you see so say you have uh, penis owners they come to you they have vulva owning partners. Um, is it helpful if both partners are kind of going on a similar journey at the same time? Like the other one's kind of doing their own work too. Do you see that often? Or maybe the, the penis owner starts to do it and then the vulva owner gets inspired or vice versa. Like, do you think that that kind of goes hand in hand? Definitely. Yeah. It's really, it's helpful and it's beautiful when you can be in this process with a partner and when you can be, when you can be each developing your awareness and each developing your own practice of your own sexual turn on and arousal and orgasm. And, and it also makes it easier for both of you because you're both Mm. working on attunement and, and, uh, noticing more subtle energies and you can even help. I mean, when you're making love with somebody, your sexual energy and your, your turn on, it's not just within your body, it's moving between the two of you. And so if you're doing these practices of breath work and sublimation where you can literally feel, I mean, this isn't like, you know, the energy moves up and you don't feel anything. It's like you literally feel movement going up through your body and you can feel like waves moving through your body. Sometimes it'll even, your body will make this sort of rolling motion. And oftentimes when you're making love with somebody and you are focusing on that, on that sort of spreading of arousal throughout the body, it will happen in the other partner as well. And so you can actually encourage it within each other's bodies. So it's great when you're both, when you're both doing this together. Mm, who doesn't want that this is a lot of yummy information and i know you are filled with so much more and you have this course which is i believe coming out uh beginning of next year and i would love for you to talk about the course how can people find you and work with you i mean <coughs> i'm obsessed with you i want to I, I, but i know where you live so <laughs> I can find you. she's coming over right now <laughs> yeah <laughs> I actually, can I say one more thing about from that last question, which is just touch their whole body first. It's just like Mm. get, because, you know, on a, on a, on a subtle level, yes, there's so much you can do, but on even just the level of bringing sensuality and bringing pleasure to the whole body before you even start making love and during making love can help so much. It helps bring that sort of localized pleasure into the rest of the body. And it's, it can be really profound. Just like squeeze their shoulders, move, you know, touch their chest, squeeze their butt and their legs, like touching the whole body, warming up the whole, whole body and getting it in that state of arousal and, and turn on is huge. Do that for all bodies, no matter who, what, whatever sure. bits they have, everyone. More of that for everyone. I think most people are like, can you touch more of my body? I mean, maybe not all people, but I think a lot of people craving more of that of all all bits. So Absolutely. anyways, so all how right. can we stalk so, you? So how do you yeah. stalk yeah. me? <laughs> <laughs> so you can find me on Instagram or at my website. My website is fabianneanique.com and my Instagram is at Fabian. Oh, you're going to have to spell that for it's sure. F-A-B-I-E-N-N-E. A N N I C K dot com. We'll have a li- we'll have a link to everyone, so don't worry. You'll ha- well, there'll be a link in the show notes. But okay, I cut you off. Uh, Fabienne Anique, got <laughs> yes, it. Fabienne Continue. Anique, and I. You c- can check out my website. I have all of my upcoming events. I do workshops, and then I also see one on one clients, and then I have this twelve week course uh, for people with penises, and that begins at the end of January, beginning of February. And <clears throat> yeah, what, 2022, 2022. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a, yeah, that's a okay, 12 cool. week online program in sexual mastery. And you're mm-hmm. taking applications. So it's, it's sort of, and, and it will probably fill up. So we're encouraging folks to, to go, go get that. Yes, um, absolutely. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I know that your, your courses are, uh, historically really amazing and you won't want to miss out on Fabian and all of her beautiful information and her beautiful self and teaching you how to be a boss sexual master. <laughs> I love the the term sexual mastery. I just love it. And I can know. I just ask one last question? This is for, for, for penis owning individuals, whether they're partnered or not like single folks, partnered folks, all the, all the things. 
Yes. Oh, you mean is yes. the course cool. for? Okay. <laughs> that was, I'm you asking. mean is the course? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, cause I, cause I think sometimes people people will be like, "Oh, well, I don't have a partner, so why would I work on this right now?" You know, I think that happens with a lot of things. We're like, "Well, I'm not going to do that work until they wait for shit to hit the fan," right? And that's when they do the work. So this is like, right. if you're single, great opportunity to go and do this work for yourself, if if or when you choose to be partnered, or if you're partnered, also great opportunity too. Yes. That was okay. I, maybe I should I just said that, I not me add some questions. I <laughs> Yeah, it's really amazing for everybody. And also it is, it's incredible if you have a partner and you want to sort of work on something, but, but it's also with this work, it's, it's not an overnight shift and it takes time and you don't want to wait until it's, it's a, it's a big issue. It's so much of it is just a reclamation of what is most wonderful about the human experience in in my opinion. You know, it's, it's Mm -hmm. this, okay, how can I, how can I master this even more so that I can be more myself and be more in my expression and live in my career in a way that I want to and interact with people who I'm interested in in a way that I want to. So it's, it's really for everybody and quite applicable for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so happy that you are on shameless sex talking about your incredible work. You are such a gem. I love you so much. Oh, I love you both. And you speak French too, by the way. So if you're a French speaker, uh, also, right. She's a Quebecois. I am not Quebecois. No, I'm, my father is from France, but here's the funny thing actually, which is that I, all of my French is from my grandmother basically. And we never talked about sex. And so every time I try to talk about anything relating to sex in French, I'm like, I have no vocabulary. I went to a gynecologist once <laughs> and I was like, I don't even know how to talk about this. I don't know. So so if you are a French speaker, you can teach me some vocabulary about <laughs> About sex. About that's, sex. About sex, <laughs> yeah. That's a good point. They, yeah. your, your grandma wasn't going to be like, here is how to stroke a penis. Exactly. And you're like, exactly. oh, thank you. She was also the type to like not oh, really God. chat about that, like bodies in general. So yeah, most, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, well yes. we, we love you. I hope everyone goes <laughs> and checks out Fabienne Anique's website and all of her offerings and We love you. We love our Shameless Sex listeners. We thank you every single week for tuning in and listening to us and being part of the Shameless Sex Revolution. And if you love us, go and give us five stars. It helps more listeners out there in the world find people like Fabienne and it helps them improve their sex lives and it's free. And uh, we love you. Just give us five stars, though, because we read every single Review. We really do. We do. So Amy re- doesn't I, read the I bad screen, ones to me. I screen them for she April because she gets sad sometimes. I take it personally. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and last but not least, we can't close an episode of Shameless Sex without giving a shout out to our wine sponsor. Why the, these episodes are free is because our sponsors and we get sponsored with wine because we love wine. So check out marginswine.com. Lots of very, very small batched, uh, independently grown. It's not some big box chain wine. You'll love it. It's amazing. You can save money. Shameless Sex 10 saves you 10% on three or more bottles. Shameless Sex 15 saves you 15 or more bottles. There's only a few releases a year, so go to marginswine.com and check that out. I say that so fast now. I'm so proud of myself. She's like a robot. It's I'm great. Like Nailed a robot. it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, y'all. We love you so much. We'll see you next Tuesday. Ciao for now. Want to learn more? Go to shamelesssex.com. And for 15% off of some of our favorite sex toys, use code shamelesssex at purepleasureshop.com.